Hi, and welcome back to the channel. In this video, I thought I would go over one of my favorite games, Getting Over It with Bennett Foddy. This is intended to be a playthrough of the game. I've already completed it several times before, so you may see me brush past sections that might take an initial player a uh, considerable amount of time to go through. The purpose of this video is to show off the voiceover that Bennett Foddy does, and I'll also provide some brief commentary at pertinent parts. Enjoy. Let's go ahead and hit new game. And let's begin. You can see I am man and hot the hammer. go ahead and just increase the mouse sensitivity a bit. There's no feeling more intense than starting over. Have you deleted your homework the day before it was due, as I have? Or have you left your wallet at home and you have to go back after spending an hour in the commute? Have you won some money at the casino and then put all your winnings on red but it came up black? If you got your best shirt dry cleaned before a wedding and then immediately dropped food on it? If you won an argument with a friend and then later discovered that they just returned to their original view? Starting over is harder than starting up. If you're not ready for that, like if you've already had a bad day, then what you're about to go through might be too much. Feel free to go away and come back. I'll be here. Alright, thanks for coming with me on this trip. I'll understand if you have to take a break at any point. Just find a safe place to stop and quit the game. Don't worry, I'll save your progress, always. Even your mistakes. This game is a homage to a free game that came out in 2002, titled Sexy Hiking. The author of that game was Jazua, a mysterious Czech designer who was known at the time as the father of B-games. And B-games are rough assemblages of found objects. Designers slap them together very quickly and freely, and they're often too rough and unfriendly to gain much of a following. They're built more for the joy of building them than as polished products. In a certain way, Sexy Hiking is the perfect embodiment of a B game. It's built almost entirely out of found and recycled parts, and it's one of the most unusual and unfriendly games of its time. In it, your task is simply to drag yourself up a mountain with a hammer. And that act of climbing, in the digital world or in real life, has certain essential properties that give the game its flavor. No amount of forward progress is guaranteed. Some cliffs are too sheer or too slippery. And the player is constantly, unremittingly, in danger of falling and losing everything. Anyway, when you start sexy hiking, you're standing next to this dead tree that blocks the way to the entire rest of the game. It might take you an hour to get over that tree, and a lot of people never got past it. You prod and you poke at it, exploring the limits of your reach and your strength, trying to find a way up and over. And there's a sense of truth in that lack of compromise. Most obstacles in video game worlds are fake. You can be completely confident in your ability to get through them once you have the correct method or the correct equipment or just by spending enough time. In that sense, every pixelated obstacle in Sexy Hiking is real. The obstacles in Sexy Hiking are unyielding and that makes the game uniquely frustrating. But I'm not sure Jazuo intended to make a frustrating game. The frustration is just essential to the act of climbing, and it's authentic to the process of building a game about climbing. A funny thing happened to me as I was building this mountain. I'd have an idea for a new obstacle, and I'd build it, test it, and it would usually turn out to be unreasonably hard. But I couldn't bring myself to make it easier. It already felt like my inability to get past the new obstacle was my fault as a player rather than as a builder. Imaginary mountains build themselves from our efforts to climb them, and it's our repeated attempts to reach the summit that turns those mountains into something real. When you're building a video game world, you're building with ideas, and that can be like working with quick set cement. 
you mold your ideas into a certain shape that can be played with. And in the process of playing with them, they begin to harden and set until they're immutable, like rock. And at that point, you can't change the world. Not without breaking it into pieces and starting fresh with new ideas. For years now, people have been predicting that games would soon be made out of prefabricated objects, bought in a store and assembled into a world. And for the most part, that hasn't happened, because the objects in the stores are trash. I don't mean they look bad or that they're badly made, although a lot of them are. I mean they're trash in the way that food becomes trash as soon as you put it in the sink. Things are made to be consumed and used in a certain context, and once the moment is gone, they transform into garbage. In the context of technology, those moments pass by in seconds. Over time, we've poured more and more refuse into this vast digital landfill that we call the internet. It now vastly outnumbers and outweighs the things that are fresh and untainted and unused. When everything around us is cultural trash, trash becomes the new medium, the lingua franca of the digital age. And you can build culture out of trash, but only trash culture, be games, be movies, be music, be philosophy. Maybe this is what digital culture is. A monstrous mountain of trash, the ash heap of creativity's fountain. A landfill with everything we ever thought of in it. Grand, infinite, and unsorted. There's 3D models of breakfast, Gen X's fanfic novels, Scan magazines, green screen Shia LaBeouf, banned snuff scenes on Live League, Facebook's got lifelike bots with unbranded adverts and candid shots of Kanye and Taylor Swift mashups, car crash epic failed GIFs, Russian dash cam vids, discussions of McRibs, discarded, forgotten, unrecycled, muddled, rotten, untitled. Everything's fresh for about six seconds until some newer thing beckons and we hit refresh. And there's years of persevering, disappearing into the pile, out of style, out of sight. In this context, it's tempting to make friendly content that's gentle, that lets you churn through it but not earn it. Why make something demanding if it just gets piled up in the landfill, filed in with the bland things? When games were new, they wanted a lot from you, daunting you, taunting you, resetting and delaying you. Players played stoically. Now everyone's turned off by that. They want to burn through it quickly, a quick fix for the fickle, some tricks for the clicks of the feckless. But that's not you, you're an acrobat. You could swallow a baseball bat. Now I know, most likely you're watching this on YouTube or Twitch, while some dude with 10 million views does it for you. Like a baby bird being fed chewed up food. That's culture too. But on the off chance that you're playing this, what I'm saying is, trash is disposable, but maybe it doesn't have to be approachable. What's the feeling like? Are you stressed? I guess you don't hate it if you got this far. Feeling frustrated? It's underrated. An orange is sweet, juicy fruit locked inside a bitter peel. That's not how I feel about a challenge. I only want the bitterness. It's coffee. It's grapefruit. It's licorice. What? <clears throat> You can see that the voiceover from Ben and Fadi has finally stopped. That's because I was going a bit faster than the game anticipates, uh, just because I've done this a number of times before. You saw me in the part with the satellite dish perform, I guess you could call it a sequence break. It feels like we're skipping. closer now, composer and climber, designer and user. You could have refused, but you didn't. There was something in you that was hidden that chose to continue. As I was saying, I did perform a bit of a sequence break by going not up a fun little twisty slide, but hopping around the satellite.
this section here is probably one of the harder parts. You could, if you wanted to, hang that hat on that hook there, but we'll go ahead and try to get around. Essentially, we need to, a nice little hammer and anvil symbolism here, we need to get Diogenes, our friend in the pot, up right above where that hook is, that cliff face. So it's a bit of a uh, bit of a hop, skip, and a jump. Yep. We'll get there eventually. The main moral of this game, by the way, is, is you know, you you face these hard situations. And if I had made one wrong move thus far, and you might see me perform one before the end of the day here, you'll get thrown right back down to the bottom of this mountain of trash. And sometimes when you just face those hard situations, you need to, as the title implies, get over it. Let's try again. So I see this, it is a game, yes, but it's also a meditative exercise and just managing frustration. You can see me scale the mountain fairly quickly, comparatively, in this video, but that's because I've I haven't practiced at this recently, but I've I have in the past. The controls are fairly unwieldy. I'll even move the sensitivity up a little bit. No matter. There we go. Now at this point, I'm going to fall off perhaps, or I might be able to, this is a hard part because the hammer doesn't exactly adhere well to this part of the cliff face. I'm going to have to cantilever myself. Oop. Drop down. Let's try one more time. Part of the challenge here is just even psyching yourself up to make these hard jumps. Oop. Basically, I need to get right above me. I'm not going to point it out with the hammer since I'm otherwise preoccupied, and then get up to the upper left. Perfect. It means a lot to me that you've come this far, endured this much. Every wisecrack, every insensitivity, every setback you've forgiven me is a kingly gift that you've given me. It's ironic that we see that line because I actually haven't faced it. I'm, I'm going to jinx myself by saying this, but we haven't faced a major setback thus far. Usually when you make a big error and fall down part of the mountain or the entire part, some smooth jazz plays and Bennett Foddy will read off a applicable quote on failure or another song might play that fits the motif usually in its title about, well, getting over it. You can see in the lower left hand corner of the screen, that's where I need to go. I'm just trying to gauge how far. Ooh. Some wild flailing on top of a snowman, but we just managed it. I haven't played this game, by the way. I just downloaded it again on Steam, perhaps in about two years. So I'm personally amazed that I've managed to get thus far. First attempt. Though I guess muscle memory is is quite a phenomenon. All about angles here. Oh, uh. ooh, ooh, that was a close one, but we just got it. Just got it. This is a very tricky section. Whoop. Almost, we almost had a little bit of an error there. I could just feel it through the skin of my teeth. Ah, and here we see a bucket. We need to use this bucket, and it's on a physics object, a rope. We are not going to ride the snake. 
You can look up what happens when you ride the snake. I will explain what happens. I've done it before for fun. We're near the top of the mountain right now. If we got on board this fun little ride, if I put my hammer on it, it would essentially take us right down to the bottom. Think of the serpent in the book of Genesis in the Bible. Rather not be tempted today. We have the same taste, you and I. It's not ambition. It's ambition's opposite. An obdurate mission to taste defeat. You'll feel bad if you win, so I put this snake in for you. And if I fall down really either side, that's going to set me back a ways. I think I might, what I might do in this video, I'll say this in advance of any particular errors I might make, is if we do face a particular setback, we might try this again tomorrow. I'll call this a multi-day exercise, but I'm flexible. We'll play this by ear. Ooh, playing, filling around there, but once you're higher up, it's a little easier to not worry about mistakes because you can't go off on a horizontal. You can see the hes hesitance in the movement here compared to other parts just because this is a section of the game which I tend to have an issue with navigating. That was close. I almost rode the snake. try it from the other side. This is a bit of a trickiness with all the empty expanse there. Just threaded the needle by missing that. Fairly certain there is some kind of Zen cone that you could get from having a bucket on a string and trying to hit it from a hammer while you're stuck in a cauldron, but I'm not creative enough to come up with such a Zen cone. This gets more frightening each time you return. Knuckles whitening, stomach tightening. Once bitten, so many times burned. This really is actually fairly close to the end of the game. Just trying something else here, trying to 
balance myself and push. Off. I think that might be what we'll need to do. Let's try. No. And here we go. Oh, you just lost a lot of progress. That's a deep frustration, a real punch in the gut. And there's the smooth jazz. Again, that could have been a lot worse. I find that this game is a good way of tempering yourself against failure, because everything's relative. You know, that could have I could have really fallen down to the very beginning by bumping off random objects. You fell from above, but I know you won't linger here. Your hammer's no longer, your jump is no stronger, but your hunger will tell. That's a good point that the, vo the voiceover just made is, and this is true for a lot of situations, once you do something once, it becomes a fair amount easier. Earlier in this video, we had some trouble with that hammer and anvil motif. Slightly easier this time around. No. And lo and behold, we are back where we once were. We almost got to the next part, but not quite yet. You can see that a common maneuver I'm trying to do here is, you saw it earlier, is projecting myself up. Just getting some sort of ledge. Again, you could probably draw a good metaphor from that type of scenario. I am otherwise preoccupied. I have a bucket on a rope. What I might try to do now is just myself into the bucket just so it doesn't keep oscillating back and forth or just whiff and miss again no big deal just get over it and try again This is my first time recording a, I guess, a game recording of this type, so I'm hoping that the recording is working. Oh. I haven't checked to OBS since I started, so if you can hear this, that means it's on YouTube and it worked, which I'm glad about. I would say on my first run through on this game, it probably took me a good four or five hours to get to this point. And this has persistently been the hardest area for me, just because of the bucket.
if I turned on the game's volume a bit louder, you'd hear some wind and noise. We are scaling a mountain. Not sure what that was. I could almost call that progress, but I... I will call this progress, though. Let's see if we cross. Nope. I have to be a little bit quicker on the jump there. Slowly recalling how I've scaled this particular obstacle past. We'll get there. There we go. It's a swing. That's that's the issue. And you may be thinking. Jeez, well, couldn't I just go? I'm very careful and not trying to fall down here, but couldn't I just go up to this upper left? No, that's actually out of bounds. Most certainly fall yet again. Oh, I just made it. Just made it. And here is the final climb. Again, very easy to fall off here. House slightly. So, so your hammer essentially can just barely. Provide you with a way up. It's very uh, difficult section. Don't have much wiggle room. You is balanced like this. It's a spike. To me, this is actually easier just because you're not relying on chance, more so just your skill. But it still does require a fair bit more precision than to have. We'll manage. Oh. Almost to the Let's see left side and back row. You can see it becomes a bit more pronounced, the incline. Oh, and I'm gonna fall. Not as much as you would think. Whoop. Game is hard and be unforgiving. It's gotta be patient, get over it. I say as I fall back to the bottom of the iceberg. It almost seems like there are some hidden points here where you're able to get a better grip. It's just conjecture on my part. It 
see there where the pot sticks in a bit. I haven't been paying attention enough to know if that's a deliberate choice or I'm just seeing patterns where it not. I suppose, though, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. Whoop. Whoop. Oh. And you get a little greedy there. Pure momentum. Two steps forward and two steps back. I wonder if I am right though. You saw where I was trying to feel with the hammer to get precisely into that next area. Well, that almost went pear shaped. Again, almost pear shaped. And we almost rode the snake, but we hit the bottom once. Whoop. Whoop. But you can see it's a lot easier once I remember how to do this to get to our last part. There you go, that's the trick, is just swinging precisely. Oh, uh. And then falling again, so that we can swing more. Whoop. I don't even know what to say to that one. That was that was a mixture of of luck and more luck, I think. But we're back where we were. Oh. 
little bit more careful here since this is farther than we've made it previously. Hold. Have you thought about who you are in this? Are you the man in the pot, Diogenes? Are you his hand? Are you the top of his hammer? I think not. Where your hand moves, the hammer may not follow. Nor the man, nor the man's hand. In this year is will, his intent, the embodied resolve in his uphill ascent. have gone better and I could have gone worse. Back to the bucket. <laughs> Oof, sorry about that. We have fallen even more. That one was an attempt. I would say this is a good point to take a break. We'll stop here for today and we'll resume this in another video. Thanks for watching and let me know how you like this format. If you want more videos like this, please let me know in the comments. Thank you.